A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tukele. Now today I'm joined in studio by Roland Pascal van Alphen, who is an advisory planner for the Wealth Corporation. Now this is to help us take a closer look at the balancing act of financial planning. Now we bring this up because uh, as many of you may be aware, we currently live in volatile times, whether it be on the uh, macroeconomic scale or on equities markets and when it comes to making investment decisions. So fundamentally, what do financial advisors watching and you as a client need to be discussing regarding asset allocation? Well, that's why we have Roland here today to tell us all. Thank you so much for your time today and joining us uh, this evening on the show. Uh, perhaps let's understand the kind of environment that we're living in. So often we hear about the battle between the bulls and the bears and many people saying that the bull market might be coming to an end. But in your perspective and in layman's terms, where do we stand at the moment? I think we, we, we're coming out of a time where there's been very strong markets and, and growth has, has, be, has been strong. Mm -hmm. um, the, the result of that is, is that markets are, are fairly overvalued or, or highly valued. Where the top of the market is, nobody really knows. And so I think it's it's for this reason that that you know the the times are, are are volatile and I think one needs to be a little bit cautious going forward because we've had a we've had a good run, um, but we don't know exactly where that run ends. Exactly. Just uh, to do a quick review and a refresher course with regard to some of the best performing asset classes in the last what five years or even the last uh, three years, has it all been about equities? Yes, I think it, I think it has been about equities, but but again, it's it's particular pockets of equities has, have outperformed others, yeah. and so it's not just be, you know it's not necessarily just because you you were in equities that you n enjoyed the full benefits of that, and I, I think it's it's for that reason that you know one needs to to ensure that you've got a. A, a reasonable spread of investments uh, or, or spread of, of, of the market so that you're not just taking one big bet, so to speak, on one particular share or, or sub, sub um, or one sector of the market. Exactly. Which takes us to that uh, investment phrase that we always hear all the time, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversification and ensuring that you have a proper spread uh, around different assets and like you say different sectors if it does fall into a particular asset class. But what is the best approach that one should be taking? Well, I suppose it's, um, uh, as the saying goes, don't have all your eggs in one basket. I think that's a better way of is, is don't only have eggs in your basket. Ah, and, that's and a new one. I've never heard that one and before. I think <laughs> yeah, someone old and wise once said that. Probably Warren Buffett. But anyway, I think if you if you look at the, the main sort of asset classes that, that, that one has is you've got equities, you've got bonds, you've got cash. And all of those asset classes perform in, in different ways. They, they have different return potentials and, as a, and also different volatility or, or the, the, the associated risk attached to those, those, those asset classes are, 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 are different. So I think what one needs to do is, is blend those asset classes in a way that takes out some of the, the volatility mm. and, and actually allows you to achieve a more or, or a smoother return or a more reliable return over time as opposed to having a, 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 big, a big ups and big downs. Gosh, having said that though, like how do we achieve that? Does it mean that less than 50% of uh, your investments need to be in equities, a certain amount in cash and bonds? And is there a one-size-fits-all solution for all investors? No, I think, I think there, there certainly isn't a one-size-fits-all. And I think the, the, time, the, the time that you have to be in the market is, 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 is quite fundamental in the, in the whole determining what those asset allocations so we we you follow an approach of of matching your your assets to your liabilities mm -hmm. so where you have short term liabilities or short term objectives um, one wouldn't go and put all of that that cash in or, or that money into into equities because your your short, short term volatility in equities um, is, it can be quite dramatic. Yeah. So, so you would look to, to put those, those assets into, into cash. 
if you've got an objective which is seven, seven to ten years out, mm. then you can afford the risk that's attached to equities and, 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 and go heavily into equities. For something that's somewhere in, in between, in sort of five years, you, you're going to look at a more balanced approach and, and have some, e some equities to drive it, but, but also some cash to, 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 to temper the, the, the volatility in the mm. medium term. So it goes back to the fundamental rules of, again, an individual basis and the need for that uh, particular analysis. But to make this easier for some of the people who are watching this evening uh, as clients who have financial advisors, what kind of questions should they be asking their advisors as we step into the new year where this market volatility is anticipated to continue? I take it making sure that, like you say, the investment strategies that you're implementing actually match up to the needs requirements. I think... I think the out there, there's, there, are, there are a lot of uh, different approaches to, to f financial planning, but not th those approaches um, are not always implemented in a way which drives or is, is kind of congruent with, with the, the model that's being applied. So, okay. so I think what investors or clients should be asking the, the um, planners is, is the way my investment's being implemented um, driving what you're showing me in a computer model? Because th those two things don't always go together because people will show you fancy models and this will be achieved and that will be achieved and then they bang you into a, a balanced fund off the shelf and um, the, the, that, that fund is not necessarily from a risk return perspective actually meeting the, the, the requirements of what your actual plan is. Mm. That makes sense because I take it then uh, uh, that also puts into the question if uh, alpha is attainable, which is mm. basically beating the benchmark. Uh, someone once described it to me, it's a difference between having a plain cupcake and a cupcake that has a little bit of icing and all the sprinkles on top uh, being the alpha mm. which represents uh, exceeding the market expectations. Is alpha elusive in uh, such uh, market times? I think alpha, alpha is always this magic thing that everybody's trying to to achieve, and um, I think what sometimes is maybe more important than than, than alpha is is just consistent returns over time, mm. and often when people are are driving at alpha, they have to take unusual or, or higher investment risk in order to achieve that. And sometimes that, that, that investment risk can be detrimental to a portfolio if that investment decision doesn't, doesn't play out in the way that, that it's hoped. Mm. So, so I think one needs to look at the risk that you're taking versus the return that you're actually targeting. Roland, another topic that often comes up with the retail investors is the argument as to whether to invest locally or offshore. Uh, is there a particular preference as to uh, which looks more favourable at the moment? Well, r right now the, the, the rand has, has devalued quite dramatically. Um, if you talk to people there, I think they, they often f just focus on our local politics and say, well, you know, there's all sorts of things going wrong in this country and mm. that's why the rand is what it is. Whereas the rand is, is just part of a, a, a basket global, of yeah. emerging currencies. Um, so, so right now the, the rand is probably oversold um, a, a, along with the other emerging, emerging currencies. Um, the, the, the answer probably lies in asset allocation again, is that um, w the majority of worldwide returns are going to come from the bigger markets like the US, like the UK. So you need to have exposure to those, those markets in a proportion or proportionate to that th those markets are, you know, in the, in the global investment environment. Exactly. Thank you so much for that. Well, we've certainly said quite a bit. Let's get a quick recap of the takeaways from tonight's conversation. Roland, to get a pickup of uh, the uh, key takeaway points from tonight's conversation for the viewer who's an investor watching at home and wants to call up their financial advisor shortly, what are the key and critical questions that uh, they need to bring up in that conversation? I think uh, the, 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 key, the key driver of, of in investment 
or investment returns is, and there's research which, which, which proves that, is that asset allocation is, is the key driver. And I think what, what clients need to be asking their planners is, 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 is how are my assets allocated? Are they allocated in a way that is appropriate to what my objectives are? So if, if I'm a, a retired person, and I'm living off my income, mm. do, do I have sufficient cash in the short term to meet those objectives um, and sufficient equities in the longer term yeah. to, to drive my, my longer term requirements? So I think the, 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 the key kind of questions is, is that. And secondly, is the, the way my investment's being implemented actually underpinning the, the financial modelling that's taking place and, and, and is it driving what, what, what you're selling me effectively? Exactly. Thank you so much for your time today, Roland, and getting okay. down to the nitty gritties that need to be asked uh, in those conversations with financial advisors and understanding that uh, these are volatile times that we are investing in when it comes to the global markets. But that's where we leave it for personal finance this evening. A very big thank you to Roland Pascal van Alphen, who is an advisory planner for the Wealth Corporation. Do be sure to stay in touch with us and uh, send us your thoughts via our Twitter handle at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or even send your tweets to myself at Kukumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.